Hello everybody, my name is Alejandro. Today, we're going to be looking at the Procreate digital art software. Now, if you're wondering what Procreate is and why it's a digital art software, why you need it, what you can use with it, and how it's going to help you in life, let's take a little walk down memory lane. Five years ago, you could have Photoshop and be just fine. Photoshop, you bought and you had it for as long as you wanted it. The downside was you needed a $2,000 Wacom Darling tablet. You needed a professional display monitor, which at the time, the cheapest ones were $30,000 if you wanted to do this on a professional level. You could obviously go cheaper with a non-professional monitor and a non-professional tablet, but if you wanted to be a digital nomad working professionally, whether it's gonna be an app development, video game design, website design, UI design, or any kind of design within the information communication technology field, you had to have this stuff. And that's a whole lot of money, especially when you're considering that all the stuff you need together, including the computer, the special computer you need, by the way, it had to be custom built, the software, and everything else is going to run you about $10,000. Now it's even more. Because if you want the entire Photoshop suite, the entire Adobe product lineup to do everything that this one $10 application does, you're going to be paying almost $100 a month in subscription. That's $1,200 a year. And when you're considering the fact that you're going to have to build a new computer every two years to be able to do everything at a professional level with professional modern technology, this is going to be very expensive. Procreate is $10. You don't need a subscription. You buy it once, you have it forever. You need the Apple Pencil, which, depending on which model iPad you have, can either be $100 or $130. And the iPads themselves, you can either get a used one for as cheap as $100 that support Procreate, or you can buy the top spec 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which is what I'm using, for about $1,000. Do you use HBO Max? That website and its UI was all made using Procreate. Of course they had to program it too, but Procreate was what made the art itself. Do you use Netflix? Did you know Netflix, all their posters are made using Procreate? Well, now you do. And when you look at all these app designs, every app I've ever made personally or contracted, I've used Procreate for its design. Every website I've used, every website I've made, I should say, has been done on Procreate for the art assets. And why would that make any difference in Photoshop? I'll tell you why, because Photoshop's expensive. And then Procreate, it's not expensive. I've had websites that I've made that have over 100,000 visitors a week. I've had apps that I've published that have had tens of hundreds of thousands of downloads. I know my way around Procreate. I know how to turn you into a digital nomad. You just have to follow my guidance. Follow my stroke of the pen. I found my closest thing to a Bob Ross shirt. And now here we are, allow me to be your digital Bob Ross. You can import things. Now the cool part about import is everything you see here is different brushes I've downloaded, which I'll show you later in this video, different brushes to download to get, you know, wonderful art can select. Now selecting allows you to preview. Once you select it, what you want to look at, you can preview it, you can share it, you can duplicate it, you can delete it. This is probably the part you're going to be looking at most, which is the part we're going to be looking at right now. You can create your canvas size. There are many different ways. For this, we're just going to be clicking on our screen size so that everything is 100% equal among everybody doing this. But if you want to create your custom canvas, which you can do by creating the plus, you can name the canvas. You can add its width and height in pixels. You can add its DPI. I always stay at 300 dpi the reason to stay at 300 dpi is because it looks better when you blow it up and it looks better when you blow it small and you don't know the devices these people are going to be using if you're making a website for example somebody somewhere i can guarantee it is going to have that website displayed through a projector on their wall it might be 100 200 inches so you're going to want to have that big dpi so it doesn't become a pixelated mess of course, there's color profile. I don't recommend messing with color profile too much. If you're going to print it for a t-shirt or something, or a poster, then CMYKs, this is the group you're always gonna wanna go for. If you're going to want to make it for an app or what we're using it for, keep it in RGB. As long as it stays digital, RGB is perfectly okay. Time-lapse, this is actually really, really cool because once you finish what you're doing, you can have the whole suite here and just watch back everything you've done. The hundreds of hours of work that you've done, you can watch it all for that particular file. Canvas properties, you can change both of these when you're inside the canvas. So we're not gonna bother with this right now because it's kind of useless here. But with that being said, click on here, screen size, and click back into the gallery. 
the gallery here, you can do a lot of things. Now the cool part is, as I was telling you earlier with the selection, how it wasn't really necessary, you can swipe left on the application's file that you're looking at. You can share it, you can duplicate it, or you can delete it. There's no reason to delete it. You can click on the name, it's untitled, that's perfectly fine. This is for when you have your presets set up. You can name it. We're going to call this lesson training. So once you have that typed out, click on here. You can pinch it with your fingers and change it however you want it, however you want the size to be. But that's really, really cool. You can't do that very easy with Photoshop. With Photoshop, you have to hold down like four different keys, wiggle around on your mouse and hope it works. Sometimes it won't work because Photoshop is so laggy unless you have a custom built $2,000 computer or better. But now here's what we're gonna be talking about with the clear and background stuff that we were talking about earlier when I told you it was useless. So the background color you can just click on within your layers. This blue highlight right here is your layers. You can change this to whatever color you want. You want it red, you can make it red. You want it black, you can make it white. For this, we're gonna be keeping it as white as possible so that we can get through this much simpler and understand it much better. You can also click on the check marks here and hide it. This is an erase tool. We're all familiar with an erase tool. This is a smudge tool. The blue is a smudge tool. Now, the thing with that that makes it really, really cool is that you can smudge things and make it look photorealistic if you're making a painting digitally, which is really, really cool, especially for websites and apps and games. You can make it look really, really nice without having to do a whole lot of effort. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And this, the blue one now, is your brushes. Now, the cool part about brushes, as I told you earlier, you can add in all these custom brushes you want. Everything from here, the brush up paint pack, all the way to the top, are all custom brushes that I have either made myself or downloaded online. For this, we're gonna be looking at two different brushes though, so go ahead and select them. We're gonna be looking at Studio Pin, which is in the inking file, and we're going to be looking at Wet Acrylic in the painting file. The Wet Acrylic we'll get to for the smudge, but for now, click back on inking, make sure you grab it. We're gonna go with any color. I'm gonna go with this off red because I think the color looks really pretty. So let's say you're making your circle here, just to make a really basic circle here. Now let's say you want to add black stripes onto it. You could do it like this and delete it away, but that's not gonna to be too useful because that's gonna waste your time, which is when we come back to layers. You can also do this in Photoshop, but it's way more complicated and there's way more steps. So you're gonna tap on your layer, but you can then name it, you can select it, you can copy it, you can fill layer. Fill layer basically works the same as background color. You don't really wanna do that because you'll lose your work. You can clear it, of course, alpha lock, mask, invert, and reference. I don't use mask. Mask doesn't really work too well on anything except for really, really high-end digital art stuff, which is weird to say, because this is a really, really high-end digital art but you just don't have the tools to do a digital mask, which is perfectly fine because a mask is what you'd be using if you're taking photos with an actual DSLR camera. You would mask it to do a double exposure or something like that, but when you're using this as a digital nomad, you don't gotta worry about that. So click on alpha lock, going back to what we were doing. Once you click on alpha lock, you'll notice checkboard behind all this stuff. And once you're at this point, you're gonna go back here, click on your brush if you accidentally switched over to erase, and then bam, you can add your stripes. Cause it's only gonna allow you to draw in within what you already had prior to alpha locking it. Now, to undo that, just simply click alpha lock. To clear this area, cause we don't need this going forward, bam, you're cleared, you're good to go. Now let's walk around the rest of this real quick. Now let's look at wet acrylic once more Let's use some pretty colors. Let's use some summer colors. Cause it's, you know, getting to that time. Let's use this nice colored pink and this nice colored blue. That's what I'm personally using cause I already had it listed. You can use whatever colors you want it, but I'm just doing it for this. Now you'll see a small overlay here. Now that doesn't really look all that nice as it's blended in together. That's how you do blending on Photoshop. You have to hope that it'll blend together like that and look nice but it's not gonna look nice and it's not gonna look photorealistic. 
But now with this, as long as you have wet acrylic selected, or it doesn't have to be wet acrylic, just whatever brush you use to make the art, you have to have that selected. And then now you're here and you're good to go. Now just draw all over it the same as you would. Circle it around, flip it around a little bit. Move it nice and nice. What I like to do once I do this is I will add in a very strong regular blue and I'll look back at the color I had before, make it a little bit higher. And now once you have that, you have your default color from before and a little bit brighter color than your default original color. Draw it in circles like this. And it gives you this really nice blob that could look really, really nice. But if you want it digitally photorealistic, take back your two original colors, flip it over, and only go down one time. And you got a very, very photorealistic. It looks great. It's wonderful. And if you're doing that on a painting for, let's say, a video game, it's going to look really, really nice. Next up, go back to your studio ink pen and draw a square. Any size square with any color you want. There's an easier way to do that. You don't have to do that, you know? As you notice, it's snap. Most people are gonna draw really fast, draw squares like that. You don't have to. You can do this, hold it, and it'll make straight lines yourself, or itself, I should say. And it looks very nice when you do that. Now, we're still on this layer one. If you don't wanna do that all on the same layer, which you probably don't want to, you can click on over into a new layer. And the new layer, you got a new box right there. But if you don't wanna look at it, there you go, you don't have to. So now that we're into this part and I've showed you how layers work, now let's look at photos and photo importing. Photo importing is very different than a photo import in Photoshop. In Photoshop, you can just resize it. There's not a whole lot you can do. So for this being said, I'm going to jump cut because again, I can't show you my photos, but make sure you click on your own photos, select the photo you want. Now here, there's many different options for you to insert. You get your help bar, which can help you find things, of course. You get your preferences, this is my preferences. You can play around and find the preferences you prefer. This is your video where you'll get your time lapse that we talked about earlier. This is how you'll save it. You can save it as a GIF. Again, you can animate on here. You can save it as a GIF, a PNG, an MP4, and an HEVC. Now, HEVC is kind of useless when it comes to digital stuff now when it comes to video. So make sure you click that as an MP4 so that when you export it into a video editing program, you can make that over into H.264 and it'll look fabulous. Now, here's Canvas. You can have your drawing assistance which is basically just showing you what you've done. It's really just there to help you um, animate, but we're not gonna be touching that here because we're not animating, we're creating UIs. You can have a drawing guide, which gives you lines, and this is really, really good, especially if you're making pixel art for a video game. There's nothing better than this. Your pixel art will look amazing. You can reference, which here you have it, this is your reference image. You can flip your canvas horizontally. You can flip the canvas vertically. You can see all the information here, which is again, it takes us back to what we were looking at earlier. It shows you your size, your layers, your color profile, your video settings, and of course your statistics, which I find this really, really cool. I love seeing how many strokes I've made and how much time I've spent on a piece. It's really quite useful, especially as you get deeper into this. Now, when we look at this again, going back to the things we can add, we can insert a file, which is just inserting a photo that you've saved on iCloud. So it's really gonna be the same process as inserting anything else. You can click on an insert a photo, which again, I cannot show you my photos, but if you click on it, you can click on your photo and it just draws it in. It's real nice and simple. You can take a photo with your camera, which is really, really cool, especially if you're just like out and about and you see something you wanna draw it, take a picture, use it as a reference, you're good to go. But now let's look at text before we add in a photo, which we'll come back to for that box. Click on add text. You can pull it around anywhere for how much ever you want to do. Now, the cool thing about this is it's going to take the color that you last used. And when you pull this around, you can pull this here, here, anywhere. You can do so many things. You can do the same things when you're pulling this as you can with a photo. But we're going to save that for the photo because if we start messing around with it too much, this layer is going to rasterize, which wasn't there when we were looking at the other ones. Basically, what rasterizing does is it takes your text 
and it makes it an image. So it's no longer a text. You cannot mess with it. Some people will do that when they're making overlays. I don't necessarily like doing that. I like doing that stuff by hand or just multiple text, but it's there if you want to. Now to get rid of this, double tap it. Here you have a whole bunch of fonts. I have a lot of fonts that I've installed, like this one. This is my favorite font to use in UI because it looks so clean, especially when you're in the style version and you hit regular, it looks so clean. Now, most of my text, I will hard code. I'm not gonna use it in UI, stuff like this, but you can do it if you want to. So let's just type something random. Let's type in H. Now see, I made a mistake. What was the mistake I made? I clicked out of the text typing area, and now it asks me if I want to rasterize or edit text. Now, this is really, really nice, because on Photoshop, it'll automatically rasterize if you accidentally click out. But here, it doesn't do that. Quickly, go back to edit text, write hello, or hella, if you are wanting to uh, please the gods of the Nords. So we're gonna go with hella, and we're gonna click back here, pull this around, wherever you want. And the cool part about this, which I really love to do, I do this with pretty much anything I do for a graphic design, not necessarily we'll be doing this for UI, but I'll be doing it for a graphic design. You can duplicate that text, what I would do here is hide that text, click here again, double tap it, click your color wheel, make it black because it looks nice, or make it any color you want. And now that you have that, you can pull it and drag it down so that it's under the blue again. Now that it's under the blue, tap this, and then just slide it as slowly as you can. And you get a nice little 3D effect on your image and it looks really clean, especially in graphic design. Making it look as clean as possible is all you want to do. It's beautiful, it's perfect. But now let's go back here, click on insert a photo, choose the photo you want. Now this photo that I've selected is for Square Enix Presents, which is basically like an E3 style event. But now that we have it here and the image is out, first you wanna click on your layer. Layer one is where we clicked and made our little box. So pull this under here so that it's behind. Now this is really, really neat, but it can be very annoying when you're first looking at it. So first, I'm gonna walk you through all the different things you can do on this. So you can drag it around, of course. You can warp it, which we'll get to in a second. So you can flip it horizontally, vertically, 45 degrees, fit it to screen, bilinear, reset it if you don't like how it looked. You can freeform it, which is really cool because if you're just grabbing it around, making it however you want it to. But there's an easier way to do that. Click on reset if you're ready to move on. Click into distort. You can just drag it around. And this is the easy part that I was telling you about. So first what you're gonna do is uniform it. You're gonna get it to about where you want it to do. Click on this green part right on top, rotate it to however your box was made. Click on distort. Pull the distortion up like this. Pull this part over just slightly so it's clean. And pull that right there so it's nice and clean on the top of your box. Now that's going to work as a snap guide for you. And then you work your way down just as if it was a ladder. Take this edge here, pull it over. And then this edge here, pull it over. Pull this one back so it fits nice. Now it might take you a second because these are very small. So it might be easier for you to just zoom in and then the bottom one as well. And boom, now that you know how to do this, you know how to create a somewhat of a billboard. You know how to create an app facing on a phone and a digital advertisement without a blur. So many people you'll see on YouTube will take a phone picture and then just say, hey, this is my app, go buy it. They won't take the time to do something like this. Doing that in Photoshop takes like 30 minutes. Doing it here took like 10 seconds. Very nice, very simple, very easy, easy breezy cover girl. Now, next step is going to show you a little bit more about the brushing. So here you have it. If you're using an Apple Pencil official and not like, you know, the Logitech Pencil or any of the other brands that make them, you've noticed that 
it's pressure pointed. I can make it as thick as I want, or I can make it as thin as I want, just by how much pressure I put on the brush. So you have a blank canvas once again from collecting all these to hidden so you don't mess with them or have to do too much. Now let's say a UV texture is like this, but it's not gonna be because that's an ugly box. So now here, I'm gonna teach you how to do this next. I have rectangle select. You can automatic, freehand, or eclipse. Now the thing with automatic and freehand, it's not, it doesn't work very well on anything. There's not a single place that that actually works. So click on rectangle, and then when you make your box, make it as however size as you want. And we're gonna pretend this is a UV texture. And then pull whatever color you want into it. We're going to alpha lock it just for easier explanation of what a UV texture is. Select any color you want and a UV texture. Again, remember to hold down. Once you hold down, you can move it however you want. The UV texture would have been created for you in a digital software 3D modeling application, which Procreate doesn't have one yet, but they are rumored to be making one. Now let's say you have this here. This is your UV texture, but you're gonna to wanna to have this look different on each side. These blue lines would represent a transparent line that's not gonna show up. Now you have brown because you're making dirt. So what you would do is you'd fill this in here, and since it's already locked for you, you just color within the lines. We're obviously not gonna go through every color, but that's how you use a UV texture. But how would you get that back out to the 3D model? You're gonna click on the tool up here, share whatever file you want. You can do a Procreate PSD file, a PDF file, a JPEG, a PNG, a TIFF, or any of these others here. Now click on PNG, it's gonna export, and then here you see it gives you an option to either send it to you, the people you talk to the most, you can put it on all these publication places, but what we're gonna do is click on save image. Export successful, there you go. You have your UV texture and your first image saved on Procreate through this lesson. The last thing to look at is right here, the photo actual editing stuff within here. You can add noise, you can sharpen it, you can bloom it, you can glitch it, you can half tone it, you can chromatic aberration it, you can liquefy it, you can add a perspective blur, a motion blur, a Gaussian blur, a Guardian map, curves, color balance, hue, saturation, brightness. Now, here's what we're gonna do here. We're going to hide this layer once again, we're going to make a new layer, and we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this. So take a random color, probably the last one you used, and then something like this. Draw it around like this, just randomly. Take another color, just randomly, because we're gonna have a little bit of fun with this layer. And then one more time for one more color. Now see, you've got all this mess here, all this mess. But when you come back here and you add some noise to it through the layer, you can start having it look a little bit cool, a little bit more like real life. Like this glow looks like a chalk image you would see written on like a really beaten down, you know, sidewalk. You will slide your finger left and right for how much ever of it you would like. When you look over here, you can add some bloom. Bloom adding it doesn't really do too much. It makes it really, really bright, which is really, really cool especially when you're making neon signs. Let's say you're making a cyberpunk style app or an 80s style app. It looks really clean and really nice. But now here's the part that I really enjoy messing around with. It's motion blur. As you add it in, you start to distort it a little bit. And you can take what was once a regular, everyday, boring, static image that you made to look really weird. You can motion blur it, add a perspective blur, Move this around to however you want it. We're gonna move it to the bottom right hand corner because it makes it look really clean. And now we're gonna add another thing which is called glitch. You're gonna add in the glitch and it starts to look like it's kind of like a broken screen. I like making that to the max. And now once you're here, here is the final aspect to make this a really cool background for your advertisements or the app design that you picked Start adding in a Gaussian blur until it's something like this. And now, as you look at this, what was once a mess that you just messed around with, you have created 
a Milky Way like atmosphere. You're making an app. Let's say it's about space. You've just created a very cool Milky Way style app. Or you could reuse this in another way. It kind of looks like bacteria and cells forming. Now you have this for a science app or a science website for a background to display behind all the text. Now, through this tutorial, you've learned many, many things. If you want to change some things up here, just to make it a little bit more colorful from the ugly color I chose in the beginning, you can mess around. And the more colors you mess around with it, the more it starts to look like a Milky Way. I usually will try to make it about a bluish purple because then it starts looking really, really good. I accidentally clicked outside, so it uh, kind of messed up, but that's okay. You can add to the saturation, make it look a little more Osmosis Jonesy. You can add it down to make it look black and white. Now you do want to make sure you stay true to the um, theory of design and color theory. You don't want it too bright, but you don't want it dark enough that it looks bad. So what I would like to do is dry, usually keep it about 40%, because once it's 40%, and now let's make a, you know, just an app, a little, or not an app, but a website to pretend. You have your menu bar up here. Menu bars are traditionally black with white text. And let's say you're gonna have, you know, the whole contents here. Obviously your content wouldn't be black in a black bar, but let's say it was, you have that there. And now it looks really nice and really invigorating. And you just really, you've created professional art without even knowing you're creating professional art. Now, thanks to this intro to Procreate, you now have the tools to mess around and learn more and more and more. As you develop through these training courses, you will become a digital nomad. You'll know all the things to do, all the tools to do, and tutorials coming in the future. You will be learning just about everything there is that you can do on Photoshop. You'll be learning how to create professional UI and much more. But as of right now, learning the basics of Photoshop was what was most important. Now you know. Now I have given you the guidance of the pin, the magical pin, to make your way into the nomadic future and work from home and be able to look out and like I said, go to London for work next week. Go to California for the next week. Go anywhere in the world. You now have the power to do that. And with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and we'll come back for the next one. And until next time, keep drawing. Remember, just as Mr. Bob Ross said, gotta have this shirt one more time be used. There is no such thing as accidents, just happy mistakes.